ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਫਿਰ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਆਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸਾਡਾ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਕਾਫੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਲੱਗ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੋਵੇਗਾ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਵਾਲ ਮੰਨਨ ਜੀ ਪੁੱਛ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਵਾਬ ਮਾੜੇ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੋਣੀ ਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਲੱਗ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੋਵੇਗਾ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ ਕਨਸਰਨ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਾਲ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਲਾਈਵ ਸਕਰੀਨ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਨੰਬਰ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਵਾਂਸ ਅਗੇਨ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਮਾਟੇ ਸਿੰਘ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਪਾਜੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਜੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਦੀਪਕ ਜੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਔਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਡੈਫੀਨਿਟਲੀ ਕਾਫੀ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਯੂ نو ਵੀ ਵੀ ਟਾਕਡ ਅਬਾਊਟ what's happening at the federal level at you know canadian level what are the polling numbers ek gal aap ehna nu puchni hai manan ji we were talking about ndp in alberta sure the problem is like when we talk about ndp in ontario mm-hmm. people think about bobbery sure ray days ray days sure yeah so how are you going to uh, overcome that ghost Well what what it is it's important to realize that that was back I think in 1991 1992 right yep. and so I mean it was many many years ago but in addition to that what's important when we look at a situation we want to make sure that we don't make a judgment call based on a sample size of one mm-hmm. I'll give you an example from my pharmacy let's say I have you know a 96 year old woman come into my pharmacy who is a smoker yes do okay. I decide because she's 96 year old that smoking it doesn't doesn't hurt your health anymore <laughs> of course not because there are so many people who at age 40 and 50 died from lung cancer yeah. but we just don't see them anymore because they've always pa- already passed away. Yeah. The same thing is true in this particular case. You mm-hmm. might remember from the first half of our show we talked about Tommy Douglas having 17 years of balanced budgets in a row. Mm-hmm. This is the counter example to that one. And so what it is okay. is that we know from statistics that while there was a challenging situation mm-hmm. with Bob Ray here in the province of Ontario mm-hmm. uh, and he's now going on to be a liberal which, you know, might speak to, you know, some of the, the reflections of the province. Was he was deciding to retire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But in his prime days he was a NDP. <laughs> yeah, so so what what it what it is is, is what it is is that uh, you know, we have to make sure that we, you know, look at all the statistics, all the facts, all the years of government the NDP has ruled across Canada and then make a decision based on that. Okay. You know, you were nominated with back in November 2 2014 you were perhaps the first ndp candidate who was nominated in in the five ridings of brampton mm-hmm. if i'm not mistaken that's correct and you have been door knocking you know slowly and steadily since then what kind of issues and challenges uh, do you see when you speak to real people you know mm-hmm. when you door knock mm-hmm. what are those so the the main challenge and this is something we spoke about in the first uh, part section of the show today to uh, job creation okay so what it is is that we have a, a number of people in our community who you know are not able to get full time work Okay. Uh, there are in temporary or contract jobs and mm-hmm. and that is challenging not only because of the low wages but they don't have the benefits and and so that produces a, a whole number of of issues and number of challenges beyond that for our young people they're studying hard in school they're doing their community service work they're engaged in sports and all kinds of different extracurricular activities to build their resumes yep. but when they exit out of university or community college they too are not finding the work and the and the jobs available and so what it is is i'm looking to draw upon my business experience along with the ndp's commitment to job creation to be able to have good jobs created close to home right here in brampton and and that's the main issue uh that that i hear about and along with that though immigration huge challenge yeah. um i remember when i got married uh, back in 97 it took about 8 months for my wife to immigrate and come to canada you would think as a first world country you know we would be able to do better and better and better yes. now the wait period you guys have 18 months 18 months to 2 years 18 you know, months to 2 you know, years yes. in uh, that case i got lucky because when my wife came in 2004 It only took 3 months. Yes, well, and but, but maybe it was me. No, 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 but no, but listen, listen, that makes sense because yeah. in, in 1997-98 it was 8 months. Yeah. Through to when your wife came it was reduced to 3 months. You would expect that that, you know, I mean, it might not get much better than that because 3 months is still quite good given yeah. all the documentation involved. but you wouldn't expect it to get worse. Absolutely. I mean, you think about it from 3 months to right. 18 months, it's now 6 six, six times the amount and and That's I'm thinking as we can do better than this. And yeah. so it's it's an absolute disaster. The New Democratic Party has had a firm commitment to family reunification. It's something that we've had a petition going on for about the last 2 years yeah. because we care about this so much. Along with that buddy is that it doesn't get as much press, but it's almost as important for a lot of people visas in fact. And so people aren't getting the visas that uh, that they want. These are for friends and family mm-hmm. who don't want to come to Canada forever, but just temporarily to enjoy our great country yep. and also to to, you know, experience those once in a lifetime, you know, occasions like weddings and the birth of children. Yep. And what's happening is is that they're planning the events long in advance. They are applying long in advance. They're doing everything. They're being very responsible. Yep. and then they're being rejected at the last minute and it's an absolute tragedy and also for that you, like one has to, like politicians they have to uh, think in their mind that india is a, an emerging uh, power and we need to maintain a good relationship with that country mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately some of the people they they don't think like that mm-hmm. so what do you uh, you stand on that 
Well, when you when you talk when you talk about you know immigration and visas and that type of thing, mm -hmm. what you want to make sure you do, you want to make sure that you treat humans as human beings, yeah. right? Irrespective of where they're from. Yeah. I mean, if someone wants to come to you know be with the birth of their first grandchild or any grandchild for that matter, yeah. you want to make sure that you know they get they have an opportunity to particip participate in that. Similarly, too. Weddings generally happen once in your life, you know, and, yes. and to have your family members and friends be around you at that time is hugely important. And so what we want to do, we want to make sure that we have uh, a relationship that's generally good, you know, with all countries and citizens of all places. Because while we speak about our community a lot, you know, in the South Asian community generally, yeah. Brampton's a very diverse place. And so what we want to make sure that we do, we want to make sure that we reach out to people from all backgrounds to but, make sure that they get the, the services. But the thing is, in your writing, there is high expectations in terms of immigration. Certainly. Can you cater that after after you, uh, you become MP? The, the thing, the thing, the thing because that, there will be every, everybody wants to come to Canada. Yeah. Well, so why are you gonna do that? Yeah, well, I, the, the, that's a bit of a myth. It, it's it's not true that everybody wants to come to Canada. From the job. Well, the, in fact, a lot of people just want to visit, and that's why we had the visa issue in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. What I would say is this: I would say that the people's expectations are not unreasonable. They want to be able to be with their families. And that's true of all of us. I mean, it's, it's the same thing that's true of me, you know, with my wife but and my children. Do you think one MP can make a dent over there in the, in the, in the national policy? Yes, of course. Of course but, one person can. I mean, let's, let's, let's just take a look at this. I mean, let's, let me pick up on that example. Yeah. And it's an NDP example. Yeah. There was one person who came along, Tommy Douglas. Not a whole lot of people know his name, but I'll, I'll share with you a bit of a history. What it is, Tommy Douglas was the first federal leader of the NDP. And what happened to him when he was very young is that he had a, a, like a disease and illness that came in his leg. Mm -hmm. He was living in Manitoba at the time. Yeah. And as a result of that, his family were very poor and his parents did not have the money at that time to have it operated and treated. And so there was a doctor who said that he would treat it for free mm -hmm. so long as his parents agreed to have that doctor's medical students observe the treatment period over time. And Tommy Douglas's parents agreed. That lesson taught Tommy Douglas that there is a better way, that we should be able to afford you know, free hospital care and free doctor care. He took that particular plan, brought it you know, into the NDP, brought it to first the people of Saskatchewan, and it didn't happen easily. Yeah. For those who know their history, they know that all the doctors went on strike, in fact, in the province of Saskatchewan originally. But eventually they came around. Not only was Medicare created, but some years later, Tommy Douglas, that one person that you spoke of, Baji, was inducted into the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame okay. for the work that he did. So yes, one person can make a difference, Baji. You know, uh, we w just don't want to limit our discussion on immigration. There are many topics. Sure. Here, but, uh, just summing up on immigration, what would your party do if, if they come into power related to uh, sponsorship of parents, yeah. grandparents, and the big issue of super visas? Your quick bite on that. Yeah. What we're looking to do, budget, we're looking to facilitate a process that is clear, transparent, efficient, and fair. That is what we're looking to do. So the current process, it is not at all clear. People don't know if they're going to be rejected or not. Okay. They don't know the timelines that are involved. And, and quite frankly, it is, it is you know, unfair in that people have to wait so long in order to be able to get their, their relatives over. I can tell you, I know of one family right in my riding, God bless them. Her brother has now finally come over. It took eight years after the initial application was filed. There are many similar horror stories. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and we all know them. And we all know them. And so, and so the New Democratic Party is going to work to address these ones. Uh, are you going to keep the super visas on or are you going to revisit that policy? You see, the, with, with, with respect to that particular item, um, I'm more focused on the family sponsorship class because okay. what it is is that the super visa is really a patchwork item. It, it doesn't solve a whole lot of problems. Okay. There are huge issues with the cost of health insurance uh, right. that we know through the community. And, and so I, I, I am not interested in trying to fix a broken system okay. in that particular aspect. I'm looking at sponsorship directly. We know what our families want, we know what the community wants, and we should be able to deliver it in a fair and efficient manner. Uh, Bilkul ji, uh, si Martin Singh ji no puchya, super visas or parents, grandparents sponsorship hote, and kya ki na je party satta vich andi hai, definitely they will try to uh, jada, uh, jada broken system, as well immigration system, unho sudar. Kis tarah to sudar aayega, aato samay dasega, lekin haje bhi super visa de utte, na ne gal haje goal mol kiti hai, they just don't want to uh, you know, abolish super visa system, they will look at improving that system. Well, what, what, what my expectation is, is that the super visa was put in place because the conservatives wanted to crush immigration. Yes. And, and so what it is is that they just put this patchwork on it, but it's, it, it doesn't facilitate the needs. I mean, 
consider this. When you go on a vacation somewhere, do you go for 10 years? I mean, no one does this. You don't even go for a five-year vacation, uh, right? Yeah, you know, there, there are pros and cons, you know, what government is saying regarding super visa. Yeah, I, I am saying there are some difference. Yeah, I'm saying there's mostly cons. And, and the reason why it's mostly okay. cons is because uh, what it is, it, it, it places a huge financial burden on families from the okay. health insurance perspective. We want to be able to have our family members come and be with us, and that is the focus. Okay, so people might look for a big relief related to super visas. Can we can we tell her? Say that again. Sorry. So people can they expect a big relief regarding super visas if yeah, NDP comes into we, power? We should we should expect that they are going to be able to have an immigration system that facilitates the sponsorship of their parents and other loved ones. Okay. Well, uh, give me uh, three major issues, uh, uh, the burning issues in Brampton North so or in our community. That's it. So we talked about jobs. We talked about immigration. Uh, another one's healthcare. So as you. As both of you know, yeah. well, what it is, I mean, Brampton Civic Hospital is right in the riding, in fact. Yes. And so the people who work at the hospital, they're doing the best job that they can with, with the challenging situation that they have. I mean, you can imagine it's one hospital for an entire city. It, it, it is not easy. Yeah. You know, in addition to that, the resources are a bit strapped. So we in the Democratic Party, given the fact that we created the Medicare system in our country, are very sympathetic to making sure that we have a healthcare system that services everybody's needs. The Conservative Party takes a very different view. And in fact, in the most recent budget, they said that they were going to cut $36 billion from healthcare transfers. Mm. So, that, so is NDP going to increase that or restore that or what is NDP? Well, we're definitely not cutting $36 billion, that's okay. for sure. I mean, you can imagine if the healthcare system is challenged already, how much more challenged it will, will it be with 36 billion fewer dollars to, to manage it? But, but if you don't cut the healthcare funding dollars coming into, how would NDP at least uh, ensure that those healthcare dollars are not wasted, like we saw in Ontario, you know, on e-health scandal, on other scandals, you know, the money is coming yes, from federal government. Exactly. So how would, how would your party, how would your party make a difference? So what's important to realize is that there is a division of power in, in Canadian politics. Exactly. And so what happens is, is that you have, you have the federal government, which supplies a, a huge portion of the funding yeah. for, for the medical system, but it doesn't administer it. And the reason why it doesn't administer it is because the country is very large, the healthcare needs across the country are, are varied, and so it would be a hugely inefficient system to have the federal government run it. And so it's pushed out to the provinces. And so we don't really, at the federal level, decide where each hospital goes, what the exact service is, um, except for in the cases of the Canadian Armed Forces, because they do come under our control. What we do is that we share with the provinces, uh, you know, the funding for healthcare. But then we have the principles of healthcare. We want to make sure that it's transferable. We want to make sure that it's equitable, uh, among other things. And so, for example, if that people travel from different parts of the province, within the province, yep. that they have the healthcare they need. Yep. But also, too, if you have you know, a health card, say from Ontario, and travel to other parts of the country, we want to make sure that you can be serviced at the same level uh, as you would be in your home province. And so, really, that would be the concern of the federal government. One more question. Uh, Sikhism believes in equality. Like sure. Men and women. They are equal. Sure. Thomas Mulcair, he's backing off on uh, women's uh, debate. Mm -hmm. Why is that? But you, 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 you know the reason. The, as well the, as the last reason. debate was done in, in 1984. Or 1984, yes. Yeah, it, it, you're, you're quite right. Yeah. And, and so what it is, it's not that Tom Mulcair is backing off from the debate. Mm -hmm. Tom Mulcair says that any debate that does not include the prime minister, uh, basically, you know, you can't debate the issues, in fact. Because what it is, is that as leader of Canada's opposition yes. and prime minister in waiting, mm -hmm. really he has to show Canadians that, you know, he can go toe to toe uh, and, and, you know, discuss the issues with the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. That is really key. And so what it is, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not that Tom Mulcair is backing off. It's in Martin, fact a failure of the Prime sorry, Minister. Sorry, there's, there's a caller online. Sure. Uh, Sashi Kalji, welcome. Sashi Kalji, Ajdi Jarchadavi, Tara Swagat hai. Haan ji, haan ji, mein ji hai, Santu Bhoor hai ji, Vildh Sir to. Haan ji, haan ji, Swagat hai ji, Tara Daki question hai. Mera question hai ni, Tara Tuhi Super Vijayati Gal Kaar Rai Ji. Ji. Chai super visa hove, chai visitor visa hove, chai student visa hove. Mm -hmm. The present government is not the purpose of 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 मेरे साहब दे ना जिना दे देखो एक बंदा ते एक बंदा जेड़ा वा ओरा एक बच्चा वा ओने कनाडा भेजता अपना बच्चा बच्चा ऐसे सेटल हो गया जी 
ਉਹਦੀ ਅਗਰ ਇਹ 60 70 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਆ ਤੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਵਿਚਾਰਾ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕੌਣ ਸੰਭੂਗਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਪੇਰੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਹੂੰ 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 ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤੇਦੇ ਆਉਣ ਦਾ ਚਾਂਸ ਦੇਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਨਾ ਜੀ ਬਾਕੀ ਤੇ ਗੱਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਛੱਡੋ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਵਾ ਜੀ 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 ਅੱਜ ਬੰਦਾ ਸੁਪਰਵਿਜ਼ਰ ਤੇ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਵਾ ਕੋਈ ਇੰਨਾ ਕੋਸਟਲੀ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਆ ਕਿ ਇੱਥੇ ਬੰਦਾ ਰਹਿ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਦਾ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਕੋਸਟਲੀ ਆ ਜੀ ਹੂੰ 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 ਉਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਲਾਓ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਕਿ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਦੋਵਾਂ ਜੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਇਨਸ਼ੋਰੈਂਸ ਦੇਣੀ ਪੈਂਦੀ ਆ ਵੀਟਰ ਵੀਜੇ ਤੇ ਆਵੇ ਫਿਰ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਇਨਸ਼ੋਰੈਂਸ ਆ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਪੋਸੀਬਲ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿ ਆਪ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਪਹਿਲੋਂ ਬੱਚੇ ਨੂੰ ਭੇਜੇ 50 ਲੱਖ ਰੁਪਇਆ ਲਾਵੇ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਮਿਲਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਵੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਖਰਚਾ ਕਰੇ ਕੀ ਇਹ ਇਜਤ ਪੋਸੀਬਲ ਆਪਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਾਂ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਵੀ ਗਰੀਬ ਆ ਆਪਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਬਹੁਤ ਗਰੀਬ ਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਅਮੀਰ ਆ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮਾਰਟੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੁਣੀ ਕਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਜੋ ਮਾਰਟੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੁਣੀ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਵਿਸ਼ਵਾਸ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਠੀਕ ਕਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਹਿਸਾਬ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੇ ਚੇਂਜ ਹੋਣੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਚੇਂਜ ਹੋਣੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਹੈ ਪ੍ਰੈਜੈਂਟ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਦਾ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਠੀਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਜੀ ਸੰਧੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਿਹਰਬਾਨੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵਿੰਸਰ ਤੋਂ ਕਾਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਉਮੀਦ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਇਸ ਚੈਨਲ ਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮਸ ਇੰਜੋਏ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋਵੋਗੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਫੀਡਬੈਕ ਆਪਣੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਨਸਰਨ ਸਵਾਲ ਜਰੂਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਂਝੇ ਕਰਦੇ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਰੋ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਦਾ ਫਰਸਟ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਯਾ ਐਂਡ 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 ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਬਜੀ ਸਟੋਰੀਜ਼ ਲਾਈਕ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਆਈ ਹੀਅਰ ਥਮ every single day i mean we yes. you mentioned earlier that you know we started canvassing at the end of the month of december and through the winter we were about three or four days a week uh, at that time by the end of april into the beginning of may we were seven days a week quite frankly each and every single day i hear a story you know just like that but martin singh the, the the problem is i know there is a problems in the system but our morality is down somewhere too regarding fraud marriages you know I, I, marriages I, I, of convenience yeah, you know, yeah, fraud yeah. marriages people coming on visitor visa yeah, and then you know, waiting for I, 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 would, I, would, I would tell I would tell you this I I I I personally believe that that this is this is a uh, a product of those people who uh, oppose immigration generally meaning that I think that the overwhelming majority of people in our community abide by the law yeah. yes you yeah. know I would argue that you have those few cases mm-hmm. um you know that we hear a lot about the the thing is this is that you don't hear about the many many thousands of cases whereby people operate legally mm-hmm. and, and abide by the law and so I would argue that um you know we have to make sure that we create a system certainly with safeguards yep. um but we create a system that's also efficient because if it's not efficient then we're we're committing an injustice against all those people who are in fact abiding by the law uh, mr singh tell us about bill c51 which is a hot topic anyways you know yep. what are your personal views and how would ndp ndp i know it says that they want to repeal bill c51 it, exactly right why why ndp wants to do that mm-hmm. uh, please tell us so 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 what it is uh, bill c51 was created by the conservative party mm-hmm. uh, in an attempt to say that you know we are under risk here in canada it means each of our personal security uh, is at risk yes uh, we know that that quite simply is not the case okay. um in addition to that when this bill went to the committee stage not one not two not three but four former prime ministers sat at the committee stage and said this bill is not needed we currently have all the laws in place already mm-hmm. to provide the security that we need for canadians yeah. and in fact this bill simply strips away personal freedoms and, and privacy rights mm-hmm. and so because of that because there's no benefit and because it costs us so much on the personal freedom and privacy aspect your credit right project the ndp has you know opposed this one from the very beginning uh, the conservatives by contrast and the liberals voted in favor of this bill not once not twice but in fact they voted in favor of it three times to pass it within the month of june mm-hmm. and so uh, june 2015 and so now we see that they're paying the price because basically what they've done they've taken the canadian charter of rights and freedoms which is famous around the world and in fact has been used as a model in some countries for rights and freedoms and they've basically gutted it they've torn it into pieces mm-hmm. and so the new democratic party we say this is totally and completely ridiculous it is in fact un-canadian and so if elected we will get rid of bill c51 so so do you think that there is no threat for canadians whether internally or externally it's not any kind of it, it, it's, it's it's not that there's no threat right. what i'm saying is that the provisions that we already have in place you know are able to prov
it, it was it was completely and utterly ridiculous. It was so badly managed that that's actually how our CISA service got created, if I'm not mistaken. They took that they took those uh, responsibilities away from the RCMP because the provisions in the War Measures Act were abused. And so we're seeing a revisiting of that. What's happening is is that we're going back and now and providing all these extra security options of, uh, to be available that don't serve any purpose, don't provide greater security, mm -hmm. and in fact strip away our rights and, pre uh, rights and freedoms. And so for the risks that are there, we already have you know, the security measures in place that we need. Okay. If, if your party comes into power, though with the minority government, how are you going to manage this situation? Because you, can't be, you won't be able to repeal it because you won't be having majority, but you still will have to work with the other yeah, yeah. I, I have no crystal ball. I mean, uh, no, it, but that it, is what it, you know. His poll numbers are showing at this moment. Yeah, we can only uh, talk about what is happening now. That's right. So, so my, my hope and prayer would be that the the members of the other political parties come to their senses and vote along with us to to, to repeal B Bill C fifty one. Tell me, Mr. Singh, do you think uh, the 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 MP right now, Mr. Paramgil, he did a good job? In the writing? You, you know, I respect all of my opponents, yes. and, and so I, I don't pass personal judgment on any of them. Mm -hmm. It is for the residents of Brampton North. You, yeah, but when you uh, go door to door, what they say, what people say, because it was liberal writing before, Certainly. then it became a conservative, yeah. and now it's about to become NDP or yeah. Uh, you know? So, so there's there's different types of politics that people talk about, right? There's mm -hmm. there's politics of going after policy, yeah. and there's politics of going after the personality. Okay. Um, myself and I think the NDP generally is that we make sure that we we focus hard on the policy and not on the personal. That okay. is for the residents of Brampton North to decide. Uh, you know, they, they've had work that has either been done or not done over the span of the last four years and they will make their decision. If you will win, yes, uh, you will be focusing on your writing or like you will be uh, telling your uh, uh, in-laws or your brothers and sisters to uh, hijack the uh, the next writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I just I, want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I understand where you're going with that. I, I can tell you. I can tell you with uh, you know with all my heart and in my mind uh, that uh, I am the only one in my family that that is focused on politics, right? Okay. And and so it is not my expectation. Um, my children are far too young, uh, you know, and I and it is not my expectation that they have any plans on politics at this point. Uh, my son, I think. Uh, after completing high school, I think he wants to become a veterinarian, uh, and and my other son wants to go into corporate finance, mm -hmm. and, and I think my daughter wants to go into medicine, and so I, I don't foresee politics in their in their future. And in point. case if you lose, yes. you still will be living in Brampton North. Oh yes, I, and I'm, do I'm, community work. Absolutely, I, I'm there for the long term. I'm there for the long term. Absolutely, I mean th this is where our home is, and so and so we we want to be there. We are, we are tied, you know, very much to to the community. We've been mm -hmm. welcomed with open arms, and it's uh, it's our pleasure to be there. Mm -hmm. in, in the last elections, uh, federal elections in 2011 in May 2011, the region of Peel, you know, it was kind of a game changer for the party in power right mm -hmm. now, conservatives. Mm -hmm. Do you see that trend to be reversed uh, with what's happening at the federal level at the polling numbers, though Ontario? Which which is going to send the highest number of MPs, about mm -hmm. 121. The polling numbers are almost neck to neck. You know, there is a three party sure. race NDP, sure. Conservative, and Liberal. Do you think the NDP will be able to open their account in? vote rich people region? Yeah, I, I believe so. What it is is that we have a very different situation here. Like if we look at 2011, uh, what happened at that time is that the election got called and then a little while, uh, maybe say a week or 10 days after that, the candidates got nominated and then maybe a week after that, they you know started their campaign offices and campaigns. Okay. It's entirely different this time. Um, even with the very early election call, 11 out of 12 ridings in Peel had their nominations completed. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is, is you have uh, candidates who have a, a much greater capacity on an individual level. You have campaign teams that have a much better capacity. And then you have a federal party that's much stronger. And so it's stronger individually, stronger locally, stronger nationally. And, and so with all of these three strengths working together, what we are seeing is that you know, people are very much considering NDP as an option, not just in my riding of Brampton North, but throughout Peel region, in fact. Some people say that you are opportun uh, opportunist. Mm -hmm. uh, is that right? Uh, they, they see uh, a white man with a turban uh, and Amrit Thari, sure. and they think that uh, uh, you want to grab the opportunity. Sure. Uh, is that right? I, I, I will tell you this. Uh, 
if you read any textbook on you know getting into politics and how to win, yeah. I don't think there is one that says become a Sikh, uh, frankly speaking. In addition to that, I became a Sikh in 1990. I mean, to say that you become a Sikh in 1990 to run an election in 2015, um, I don't know. There's about a 25-year span difference in that. And, and so I, I, I'm not so sure that the two are connected. I mean, my faith is my religion because I follow Vaiguruji, Vai right? And, uh, and what comes from that is, you know, his blessings, really. Mm. So your wife uh, is helping you in your campaign? Absolutely. I mean, we, we are a team. I mean, uh, family is very important and, and the yeah. whole unit has to be there. I mean, uh, she is my home minister, you know, and, and we have to uh, make sure that we all work together. So she is from Kaur, Punjab, Amritsar. She is, she is, yes. Yeah, her Nanke is a, is a Chima Kaur, which if I'm not mistaken is nearby, uh, you know, Kotwara Barbuta Saab. Yeah. So lots of people from Amritsar, they are coming to your campaign or not? Uh, people, free, people from everywhere are coming to the campaign, frankly speaking, right? Like there is no division in our campaign, uh, you know, uh, and this is reflected in our volunteers, you know. Uh, our volunteers are people of all faith, come from all different, you know, country backgrounds. You know, we, you know, Sikh, Hindu, Muslim, Muslim, Christian, people of no faith. It yeah. should be that way. Yeah, uh, of course. Well, and, and we know this, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Sikhism, uh, you know, and other religions too, looks to, you know, open itself up to invite all people in. And, and we work to represent all people. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if I become MP, I have to represent all my constituents. Right. Uh, some of the issues, you know, related to, you know, uh, social policy, you know, mm -hmm. of NDP, if you want to briefly tell us what changes NDP is likely to bring on social matters. Yeah, so so the, 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 the most important one on this that we've heard so far in the news is the child care policy. Right. Uh, and it's interesting because, yes, it is a social policy, but it's also an economic policy, and I'll share with you the reason why. Okay. So from a social policy first, we in Brampton, we often talk about how we have the most expensive car insurance in the entire country, but we also have the most expensive childcare in the entire country as well, yeah. and that was profiled in the Globe and Mail some yeah. months ago. Yeah. And so what it is is that the New Democratic Party recognizes this. They recognize that it's a challenge for families, um, not just in Brampton, but across the country. And so we're looking to put in this particular policy to alleviate this particular stress and strain. We know it can work because provincially in Quebec, they implemented it. First, they implemented it at $5 a day, then $7 a day. They realized that it wasn't sustainable. After doing their analysis, where did they move it to so it's sustainable? $15 a day, okay. which is the exact same number that we're looking at. So that's the social part of it, the social policy but $15 side. a day, uh, the, the minimum wages we are talking about, right? No, no, uh, no, no. no. Uh, this is the $15 a day cost for childcare. For childcare. Uh, like, yeah, I want, uh, yeah, uh, with the $15, what about, what's your uh, stand, NDP stand on uh, minimum pay? So we, you, we, you guys want to do fifteen dollars per hour minimum pay, right? So, so that's so it's it's important. Again, we have we have distinctions between federal and provincial. Mm -hmm. um, the federal government has has regulation over federal departments. So we are very much in favor of a fifteen dollar a day, fifteen dollar an hour rather, not fifteen dollar a day, fifteen dollar an hour minimum Is wage. Is it feasible? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, what it is is that in our area here in Peel region, the people most affected be you know a number of the airport workers because the airport and transportation comes under federal jurisdiction. Yes. But if I can jump back to childcare for a second, because we talked about it as a social policy, yeah, go ahead. but it's also an economic policy. Why is it an economic policy? Because we know that in the province of Quebec alone, when this was implemented, seventy thousand people who previously weren't working rejoin the workforce. Okay. And so what happens is, is that you have a huge number of people who previously were not employed who are now working. Mm -hmm. And so that's of a benefit. That's of a benefit to the economy overall. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's pretty much done. Uh, I would like to thank you for coming down to our studio. It's not the end of your interview session. We would like to have you come you back, you know. Be my pleasure. Back. Yeah. And we are actually trying to organize political debates amongst all the candidates. Excellent. If, they, if their parties do allow them to, you know, appear. Yeah. <laughs> we will appear from the NDP. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Martin Singh, and all the best for your uh, future yes. and elections. Thank you so much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. ਇਹ ਸੰਜੀ ਮਾਰਟਿਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਚਰਚਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਦੀ ਲੱਗੀ ਆ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਫੀਡਬੈਕ ਜਰੂਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦਿਆ ਕਰੋ ਮੇਰਾ ਫੋਨ ਨੰਬਰ ਹੈ 416-305-768 ਔਰ ਅਗਲੇ ਹਫਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਨਵੀਂ ਸ਼ਖਸੀਅਤ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਨਵੇਂ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਫਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਸੇਵਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹੋਵਾਂਗੇ ਔਰ ਆਸ ਕਰਦਾ ਕਿ ਮੰਨਨ ਗੁਪਤਾ ਹੋਣੀ ਵੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਅਗਲੀ ਵਾਰ ਫਿਰ ਆਉਣਗੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਮੈਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਮਾਰਟਿਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿ ਰਿਹਾ ਸੀ ਇੱਕ ਸੈਂਡਵਿਚ ਬਣਾਉਣਾ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸੋ ਅਗਲੇ ਹਫਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਇੱਕ ਨਵੇਂ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਦੇ